Hello, welcome to Quality Food Safety 101. This is Arsalan and today we are going to talk about CCPs. CCPs are critical control point and this is the seventh step in HACCP Codex Logic Sequence and the second principle which we are going to discuss today. So let's start. So in today's videos, we are going to discuss everything about CCPs, including the definition of CCPs and the CCP decision tree, which is approved by the uh, Codex Elementarius, which is the organization uh, which documented the whole HACCP system. In addition to that, I'm going to also discuss with you some tips about uh, how many CCPs should be there in an organization and what happens when there are too many CCPs in an organization, whether it's good, bad, or it doesn't matter. So all these things are coming up in the video. So first things first, let's talk about the definition of the CCP. So here is the definition of the CCPs. CCP or critical control point is a step at which control is applied. So the first sentence of this definition makes one thing clear to us is that the CCP is a process step which has been identified in the process flow diagram. Then it says that and it is essential to prevent or eliminate a food safety hazard or reduce it to an acceptable level. So it means that the control which is applied at this stage is essential because this is a critical control point and if the control fails, the hazard, whatever is the hazard will go to the consumer. So let's suppose if we have a CCP uh, like cooking and the hazard is that if we don't cook the food properly, the microorganism will survive and the food will be undercooked. So if we miss the control and we do not cook the food properly, the microbiological hazard will or can go to the consumer. That's why it's a critical control point. So this is how we look at the definition of CCPs. So just to do a quick recap, we have identified a series of process steps in the process flow diagrams. Then in the step of hazard analysis, we further filtered them into significant hazards and insignificant hazard. The insignificant hazards or you can say lower category of hazards are controlled by prerequisite program. And the significant hazards are now at this stage of CCP identification where we want to know whether they are critical control points or not. Out of the significant hazards, there may be some of them which progress to become a CCP and re remaining will not become a CCP. They might become a CP which is a control point and then uh, there's a different kind of a analysis for them or different kind of a control which is established for them. But in, a, in any scenario, all the significant hazards are important or all the steps which have significant hazards are important. Here I want to discuss with you that before we go into the CCP decision tree discussion that CCP decision tree is not the replacement of the knowledge of the HACCP team. CCP decision tree is just a tool to determine or to understand whether a step is a CCP or not or the hazard is a CCP or not. But it is very essential that the HACCP team makes a scientific and a sound judgment based on their knowledge and the experience of the industry that to understand whether this step is a CCP or not. Okay, that's also very important. Equally, in, in addition to that, now HACCP is a very common system. So almost for every industry, there is a common knowledge about which steps are CCP and which steps are not CCP. And uh, you know, uh, this information you can gather from previous HACCP studies, you can gather from scientific knowledge or from the experts or, or like consultants studies which are there. So all this data is helpful to determine a CCP. So CCP decision tree is just a tool, but it's a very, very helpful and essential tool to understand. And we'll talk about it now. Another thing to remember is too many CCPs is not a good sign. When a system has too many CCPs, it means that the HACCP study has not been conducted properly. The, either the HACCP team does not understand hazard analysis properly or they do not understand the CCP decentry properly. And they are considering maybe uh, those hazards which could have been controlled properly with the prerequisite program, they are still considering, considering them as significant hazards and essentially they are coming automatically as CCPs. I'll give you one example here now. Let's look at a case study here. So let's suppose at the stage of uh, cooking, I have a hazard which says that 
if the cooking containers are not clean properly the chemical from the cooking containers can go into the food and later on cause chemical food poisoning to the consumers now this is a valid hazard but in answer to this hazard i should have a very sound uh, you know justification that my control measures of proper cleaning system proper food safe chemicals and proper training of the staff will ensure that this hazard does not happen and the likelihood and severity of this hazard will be very low and as a result it is not a significant hazard and i do not need to consider it into a certification tree but if i don't do that or i don't have the proper control measures then of course this hazard will be uh, you know very significant and in the ccp decision tree it will become a ccp so either i did not study the hazard properly or or on the other side maybe i don't have those control measures in any scenario in or in both of these scenarios this is a wrong understanding of the process and before taking this hazard into the ccp decision tree i need to first put proper control measures and then i will have to go forward otherwise all of my systems all of my hazards which i can control through prerequisites will become ccps so the point of hasap will be lost so why i say that the point of hasap will be lost is that hasap is a system which focuses the attention of the management to certain steps which will become ccps so that they can be controlled properly if every step become a ccp then there is no need for hasap system every step is equal so that's where the hasap loses its power right so after understanding the basic idea of ccps let's talk about the ccp decision tree or also known as the codex ccp decision tree so the first question of the ccp decision tree is asking you do control measure exist at this uh, step so if you remember in our hazard analysis we already identified control measures at each stage if you have done that then your answer of this question will be yes and you will go to question number 2 but if you haven't done that then the hasap gives you another chance here by asking you uh, a sub you can say a supplementary question that which is question 1a that do you need a control measure or do is uh, having a control measure necessary for the safety of at this stage if your answer is no then it's not a ccp because this stage is not having that much hazard which will need a control measure but if your answer is yes which would which would mean that that you need a control measure but it's not there then the hasap will ask you to go back and modify the step or the process or the product to apply a control measure and then come back this is just simply basically you can say that way that you have not done your college and you have come to attend a phd degree which is you know not logical so you have to go through the uh, logical sequence so that's what the hasap is asking you to do so question number 1 is uh, do control measure exist where uh, your answer most probably in almost all the cases will be yes and you will go to question number 2 now the question number 2 is the most important question out of the whole uh, decision tree out of the four questions and this is the one of the most tricky question also so the question goes like this is the step specifically designed to eliminate or reduce the likely occurrence of a hazard to an acceptable level now in this question you can see i have uh, made two of the two words or one actually one word uh, as bold which is the step so it means that the question is talking about that particular step where you are uh, or which step you are discussing it's not talking about a control measure it's not talking about prerequisite it's not talking about a system it's talking about that particular step so for example i am at the stage of receiving and i am thinking about uh, physical hazards which can happen at the stage of receiving so this question is asking you at the stage of receiving at the st step of receiving specifically have you done any specific control measures to control that particular hazard if you have done that then your answer is yes and you have a ccp for example uh, at the stage of uh, metal detection the metal detector has been put specifically to control a physical hazard there is no other use of a metal detector the metal detector does not even exist in a flow diagram if you don't want to have a Uh, metal detector or if there is no metallic hazard available in the in the industry 
so if you have put a ventilator it ha it has been put only for one reason that it will eliminate or control the hazard of metals for that kind of a uh, you know stage the answer will be yes and it will automatically become a ccb you don't need to go to question number 3 and 4 so in the whole food industry there are certain steps which are always uh, going to answer yes at this stage for example cooking cooking is another step which has been designed specifically and only to kill microorganism actually all the heat treatments are done because of that like cooking frying pasteurization sterilization all these heat treatments are specifically designed to kill microorganism there is there is no other use of these steps that is why uh, for the hazard of microorganisms these steps becomes uh, become ccps at the stage number 2 so we call them as Question number one, yes. Question number two, yes, and they become a CCP. Another example, just to remember or just to understand this point is, if you think of uh, example of uh, hot holding or hot storage in the food industry, this hot storage is not designed to control actually microorganism. Storage is designed to only build inventory. Of course, as a control measure, we have a temperature control there. which will control microorganisms multiplication but the actual logic or actual need of that step is only to store food for future consumption in very olden days where there was uh, no refrigeration no freezer people still used to store food somehow or the other and they used to consume consume it after some time that phenomena has been there for you know decades and decades or you know for centuries and there was no refrigeration at that time so refrigeration is just a control measure this is stage or this question is asking about the step not the control measure so that is the that is where the confusion starts please remember we are only discussing about the step so when you think uh, very clearly what is the purpose of this step then you will get the answer of the this question correct so in generally in food industry all the killing steps and all the special steps which we designed to control a hazard uh, will give you a answer of this step as yes and you will become uh, you will get a ccp if your answer of this step is no uh, for example let's suppose again taking the example of hot holding that uh, is this step specifically designed to control the hazard of microorganisms in case of hot holding the answer will be no because hot holding is not designed to control the hazard of microorganism it's just a storage step so when we say no we go to question number 3 which ask us could contamination with the identified hazard occur uh, at this stage in in a excess level or in a in a level which is uh, unacceptable to us so in almost every scenario the answer of this question mostly will be yes why because contamination can happen at any stage first of all Uh, but if your answer is no which could happen in a scenario where the product is already packed already sealed in a container already sealed in a packaging in that case your answer can be no so you will get go to uh, the scenario that the stage stage or the step is not a ccp but if your answer is yes then you go to question number 4 which is more likely uh, where the question number 4 is asking you will a subsequent step eliminate the hazard or reduce it to an acceptable level now this is another very very important question this question is not asking you about the current step is asking you about the future step so if you are at the stage of uh, receiving this question is asking you will there be a subsequent step which will control the hazard uh, and reduce it so if you are talking about microbiological hazard and in your operation if after receiving there is cooking then your answer will be uh, yes and it is not a ccp and because you have a more higher control coming up in the process flow afterwards but if you are at the stage of let's suppose hot holding and you don't have any other control of microorganisms after hot holding and, it, and the food is directly going to the consumer your answer would be no and you will get a ccp so as a result you will have two types of ccps uh, one of them i call as yes yes ccp uh which where the question number 1 and question number 2 both of them are yes and you will get a ccp and the other type of ccps i personally call them as yes no yes no ccps where the uh, question number 1 answer is yes question number 2 is no then 3 is yes and the 4 is no which will give you another ccp these are two different classification two different logics of ccps so the logic for the first type of ccp which is a yes yes ccp is 
that these are those steps which are specifically designed to control a particular hazard like cooking, like reheating, uh, like uh, metal detection, like pasteurization, all these or, or even sieving, uh, which is filtration. These are all the steps which are specifically designed to control the hazard and they are yes, 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 please. And for the other steps like uh, hot holding or chilled storage of ready to eat food items or temperature control storage, all these stages will become a yes, no, yes, no CCPs, uh, where the, uh, the logic is that after this step, there is no other control coming up to control that particular hazard. That's why these are CCPs. Okay, so this is the two types of uh, CCPs. So yes, this is how we identify the CCPs through, through the CCP dysentery. So in today's video, we discussed in, the, uh, in detail about the decision tree and about uh, some tips about the CCPs that too many CCPs are not good for an organization. When there are too many CCPs, it means that the hazard analysis is not done properly or the organization does not understand CCP decision tree. In either scenario, the HACCP team needs to revisit or review these steps and then go forward. Uh, I hope that you uh, enjoyed today's video. If you have any questions, this is, I know is a, is a tricky topic, uh, especially the decision tree. So if you have any questions, feel free to uh, tag me in the comments and I will surely respond to you. Thank you. See you in the next one. And yes, yes, yes. Do subscribe to the channel. Thank you.